A special BBC investigation has found that police officers in the UK are widely misusing their body-worn cameras by switching them off when force is used and deleting or not disclosing footage. The National Police Chiefs Council said the majority of body-worn video does highlight good policing. Our investigations correspondent Noel Titheridge has the story. Three years ago, a Black Lives Matter protest gathered outside Downing Street, attended by Uthayal on the left and his sister Louisa on the right. The protest was initially peaceful. There was dancing, there were speeches. Two hours in and that peace was broken. A clash quickly escalated, leading to Louisa's restraint. I completely blacked out. I couldn't breathe. I was telling the officer, like, help me get my hand, and he continued to rub my face in the ground and kneel on me. You do not leave your arm out, or we'll flip pain, OK? The siblings were arrested and charged, accused of assaulting an officer in Ufayal's case and being threatening or abusive in Louise's. Now, BBC analysis of multiple body-worn videos shown for the first time reveals the force used on the siblings themselves. I was punched in the face, my sister was pushed, and then we got charged with assault, even though we were assaulted. We've examined how the incidents unfolded in little over a minute across multiple cameras. Watch here as Louisa is pushed backwards by an officer's right hand on her neck and left hand on her chest. Just five seconds later, in the far left corner of the screen, a different body-worn camera shows Ufael being struck by an officer who was then pulled backwards by colleagues. Moments later, and having removed herself from the front of the protest to search for her car keys, Louisa is restrained by a group of officers. I literally thought I was going to die. So you're okay. I blacked out. I've got your heads, you're okay. Despite what they experienced and the charges they were facing, body worn video revealing officers' use of force wasn't initially disclosed to either of them as part of their cases. It was very weird because the evidence that benefited me was put in his case, and the evidence that was benefiting him was put in my case. Without us getting the evidence from each of our cases, we probably wouldn't be in the situation that we're in right now. Hey, move your arm out! She was terrified. This is really worrying and shocking, and I think the fact that it's taken two and a half years for anybody to get to the bottom of what's happened means it's ruined their lives. Baroness Casey's review into the Met found that the force lacks accountability and transparency. I think the way many police officers consider body-worn video is that it's almost to cover the back of the police. We all know that arresting people is difficult, but if you've got nothing to hide, release the video, release the information, be transparent and be honest. Louisa deferred starting a law degree for three years, fearing a prosecution. The siblings were eventually acquitted, but both say their two-year legal fight had a big impact on their lives. I was working in a retail um, store in Westminster. I lost my job because they barred me from the area. I was accused of something and I could have spent time away from my family, my daughter, everything that I love for malicious lies. The BBC has also learned that body-worn video wasn't disclosed from the camera of the officer who pushed Louisa. In a statement, the force told us there were errors with disclosure of evidence and apologised. No action has been taken against any of the officers involved. Cameras are only being put on when officers feel like it's necessary or they're being targeted. It's labelled as protection for the public, but ultimately it protects the police. Cuffs. You've got cuffs. The Home Office told the BBC that police forces should hold officers accountable to standards and use of cameras must be justified. Nolta the Ridge, BBC News.